Panda is well known for its versatile capabilities using Python and custom scripts. In this video, we've seen how Configurator adds functionality to Sage 300 without coding. And just a reminder that Configurator functionality is available in Extender, Customizer, and Developer Editions as well. So in this video, we've seen that with Configurator, you can use logging to help management with compliance, alert to facilitate collaboration, integration to reduce duplicate data entry, and workflow to save time, support compliance, and more robust processes. In building on the extender workflow capability released last year, we're pleased to release our latest offering, Remote Action Service, which is a subscription-based service which lets user progress extender workflow and approve Sage 300 records in the cloud without logging on to Sage 300. In last month's webinar, we've demonstrated a few remote approval scenarios that you may have seen. And this is how it works. You include a remote action in a workflow template associated with a Sage 300 record. When the record is updated by a user, the workflow starts. The remote action script connects to the service to build the form based on the workflow template and sends an email with a unique URL to the approver. The approver can then read the email to view the details and follow the one-time link to add comment, confirm the amount, and approve or reject. This is all happening in the cloud on the Remote Action website without having to connect to Sage 300 and is all configured in Sage 300. On a regular basis, this is how the data now comes back into Sage 300, the polar runs, and the polar is an extended script that pulls the completed forms to progress the workflow. And progressing the workflow may complete it or may just take it to the next step. So in summary, this is how it works. There is no open port on the firewall because they are all uh, pull requests and uh, you don't need to install anything beyond extender and the remote action extender module. And the polar can be automated using process scheduler. So now we're looking, we're going to look at um, two demo scenarios. The first one around AR credit limit. So Sue will request a credit limit increase, which will start the workflow, and Steve will then approve on the remote action form. Finally, when the process scheduler uh, polar runs, then credit limit is updated and Sue is notified. We'll look at a second scenario using AP invoice batches. Same overall architecture. We're not showing, uh, we've seen a lot of examples in the video of how to configure the workflow with various approval scenarios. So here it's a simple approval where Sue makes the AP invoice batch ready to post. Steve will approve on the remote action form. And when the polar runs, the batch is approved and posted and Sue is notified. And then Anne will also show us how to include remote actions into the workflow templates. So I'm now going to hand over to Anne to do the demonstration. Thanks, Natalie. So I'm logged into my Orca Oz Enterprises company, um, logged in as Sue, and this company does have a token to the remote action service, which I'll show you how that gets set. And um, so approvals can happen either on the workflow console or directly on the website. So Sue's going to submit two records for uh, Steve or somebody in the finance manager group to, to approve. Um, the first one's going to be a credit limit approval. So Sue's going to request that the credit limit um, for Ronald Black goes uh, up to 70,000. And when Sue saves this record, uh, two things happen. A form is created on the workflow site and an email is sent to Steve as part, well, three things happen. The workflow kicks off, which then creates the form on the site, on the remote action site uh, in order for it to be approved remotely and also sends an email to Steve or whoever, in, according to the workflow, who happens to be Steve, who's a member of the finance manager group. And then, as we saw previously, sets the credit limit back to 65,000, which was the original value. So the workflow knows it's requested to 70,000, um, but it comes back, uh, gets set back to 60,000. 
And we also see a visual alert with this gray triangle that there's now a workflow in progress. And whoever, if I was a member of that group who could approve, I would see three people. Or if I was just uh, only for me to approve, I would see one person. But Sue can't approve, so she just knows that there's a workflow in progress. And if she changed the credit limit again, she would uh, get that same message as well. And also, Sue wants um, Steve to go ahead and post this batch for their website redevelopment. Um, so either by attempting to post, which changes the ready to post flag to yes, or just by changing the ready to post flag to yes, the workflow gets uh, triggered automatically. And again, the, when the workflow is triggered, a form is created for Steve to, or somebody in the finance manager group to approve. And um, and an email is sent accordingly as well. So Sue could go to the workflow console not to approve, but if she views the everything on the console, she sees there's this AP invoice batch, this last one, 113 is the one that I've just uh, made ready to post. And we also see Ronald Black's multi -le uh, credit limit waiting for 70,000. There's also another batch sitting here, which I approved, which Sue made ready to post late previously. So I'm um, just going to the email and clicking send and receive. And I've got a few email boxes here, so it takes a, a few seconds. So Steve has um, a whole heap of emails from yesterday, but um, some new emails coming in. And we see he's got the AR credit limit for Ronald Black. Um, so just opening up that uh, email template, you can see that um, you can include in your email template uh, any field from the record that's under the workflow. So in my case, the, this case, it's the AR customer, and I can include fields from the customer, fields from the company, and who did the submission. And from here, if Steve's in the office, he can click on Workflow Console to open up the console as Sue did, and approve or reject and drill down from there. Or if he's not in the office, he can click on this one-time link. And this one-time link takes him to the form that was created. And the form was created by the workflow action. And you can see it's very similar. You can include the same information that you include on the email template. You can include on the form template. And I'll show you how that is, um, how that is done shortly. So on your, form, on your forms, you can have your own logo, uh, the title of the form, the content of the form, which is defined by your uh, message template. And the form knows who uh, was who 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 clicked on the link because if this had been sent to a group you would have three people maybe who can come to this form and each of the links knows who the person is and that's not um, amendable the credit limit amount so Steve can say yep that's okay or he could change it um, and this depends on your um, your credit limit uh, your credit limit workflow that you prompt for an amount and let them change it. And we've also said the comments are mandatory. So if I try and approve without comments, um, I, I need to fill it in. So I'm gonna say it's okay to post at 69,000. So not the 70,000 that Sue uh, requested, but 69. And when I approve, or when Steve approves, this form is then completed. But this information sits on the website until such time as the um, extender script polar is run to, to retrieve both this plus any other approvals that are sitting there ready to go. So before I um, poll and bring this down, I'm just going to have a look at the other uh, record the AP payment, AP invoice batch that was, that was submitted. And from here, again, I could go to the workflow console if I was in the office or click on the, um, the form. And this time it opens up for the AP payment batch. Again, you see it's very similar or can be very similar to the email. You can include the same information in your form message template. And this time, it's not asking for an amount and comment, it's just asking for the comment. And Steve needs to fill something in there um, and then accept or reject. In this case, I'm going to accept. So just going back into um, Sage 300, this time I think I'm still logged in as Sue. So normally, 
you would use process scheduler to schedule the send the polar extender script to pull down those responses and uh, you know obviously so um you can use uh, uh, come what comes with the remote action module is this polar script which you can run manually and it goes to the web to your configured website and pulls down any approvals or rejections that have happened since the polar last ran or you can use process scheduler to schedule this polar script um, and that will pull down any approves or rejects. The advantage of running it through process scheduler is you will then have in your process scheduler audit trail every time the process, the polar was run and a, an associated log file of what the polar did that you can review at any time. And especially if there were any errors, then you've got an, a record of which workflow instances resulted in an error in process scheduler. If you don't go with process scheduler, it can be ran, run manually, in which case uh, the errors are still logged, but you need to know where that log is to go and um, look in, in the log file. So I did run the process scheduler poll. So I would see if um, either by going to my workflow console, I would see that those my AP invoice batch number 113 is posted and finished and my cre credit limit request for 1200 is posted and finished. So I can check that either on the console or by going to the workflow summary log. And here we can see the AP payment batch, which was submitted by Susan, um, is now posted. So, and it was posted by Steve. And the AR credit limit was submitted by Sue at 70,000 and approved by Steve at 69,000. Uh, both of those being done on the website. So how did we get this remote action um, happening in our Sage 300 company database? So using the latest product update of Extender, you would go to uh, your modules. First, you download the remote action module from our website, which will be in the product download area um, today, today or tomorrow, or let's say Monday. So on Monday, go and have a look. You'll have the remote action uh, module that you can just download and click import. Um, and what the remote action module brings into this, uh, into the, your Sage 300 company, and this is company by company, is a number of scripts. So you end up with the remote action options UI, the remote action polar. Now that's the script that I scheduled using process scheduler to bring down the responses and your token UI. So the token is really a whole long number, which gives you a namespace on the um, remote action service website. And that's per company. That's all the, um, where all your forms go and the uh, actions that this particular company polls. In addition to this, I will show you, you also get three workflow actions that allow you to create the form um, in different ways. And those, those three options, so these three here, not this one, I added that, um, you get the polar, which is the, um, if I wanted to manually just poll now, I could run that. You get your remote action options, and the remote action options shows you the status of your token. So in this case, my namespace is Orca Oz Enterprises. I've got 500 um, uh, forms. I can create 500 forms per month. So far this month, I've created 66 on this namespace. And so I've got remaining 434 for this month. And that's how the remote action service is um, sold. It's a, um, you know, a subscription for a number of monthly um, forms that get created. You can have your own logo. So remember we saw on, on the website, uh, on my um, forms, oh, I closed that. Uh, we saw the Orca on that. So you can have your own logo up there as well as a style sheet if you, if you want to have your own colors and so on on that particular uh, form. You also have the token which is either this icon or you can go to the token from here, which is the whole long number that we um, that you get issued once you subscribe to the service. And for 
NFRs for resellers, you can apply for your token and we give you a, a, a namespace that you can use for demonstration or live purposes, which is limited to 500 forms per month. And there's no charge for that. So then in addition to these three, um, these three icons, in your workflow templates, you now have the ability to include a workflow action which uh, creates the form and sends the email with the form link in. So this is my AP invoice batch approval. And it goes through you know, a number of setup, uh, setups for this particular workflow. But at the point in time that, and we were showing you the finance manager approval, which is actually this particular email, you have this, these three new actions in your workflow. So you've got workflow, send remote action with a comment and um, in, in a comment in the form. Um, send remote action just, uh, these names look a bit strange. Sorry, that's better. Thank you, Natalie. Um, so we've got a, a send remote action with a comment and amount in the form. And that's the one that we saw for the AR credit limit. I could enter both the credit limit amount and the comment. Then we've got send remote action with just a comment. And that's the one we saw with the AP invoice batch. And you have got a third type of form, which has just got the approve or reject, just your buttons. So no, you don't enter any comment, you don't enter any amount, or you can't. It just knows who, who's clicking the button and what buttons there are. So those are the three configurator actions you have with remote action. If you wanted a form with two comments or two amounts for some reason, something like that, then you would need to go with the developer edition and take this form and customize it, have your own action, which creates two comments and two amounts on the form. So until the point that you need a customized form, you can use the configurator. So for, for our particular action, we have, we're have we going to send, um, this is my AP invoice batch, so we're just going to send one with a comment. And this is the email template that we're going to use. Um, so I'll show you how that, uh, that gets built. And this is the form template that we're going to use. So in the same, and I'll show you that too. So in the same way that you build the email template, you can include records, fields from the record that's but the basis of the workflow instance, in this case, the AP invoice batch, you can include those same things in the, in the form um, template as well. So it's going to this particular uh, group or person, and this has been set as the finance manager group in my workflow based on the dollar value of the AP invoice batch. And this is the place where you define what your form buttons are going to be. So accept. Um, so the, the button's going to be called accept and the step that it's going to progress to is accept and post, which you see here, accept and post. And the reject button is called reject, but the step that it runs is reject post, which is, you can see it up here. So let's go and look at, have a look at these um, workflow templates, email template, message templates. So this is the message template which sends the email. And you can see I'm using HTML. It could have just been plain text. And you can include both the company name, um, the org ID and the company name, anything from the AP invoice batch, uh, the, the point in time that the person, you know, when, when it was submitted. So it was submitted by um, Sue or your second approval. It shows you the second approval information, which is actually this email. And most importantly, and what is provided by the remote action uh, module is this form URL. So all you need to do in your message template is include form URL. And that is what gives you in my email um, that Steve got this, uh, that's, uh, that's the approval, sorry, we need to find Steve. And that is what gives you in the AP invoice batch, this link here. So form URL includes a link to your namespace 
and then the um, the unique ID going to that form with the user that was uh, that received this particular email. In this case, uh, it was Steve. So back in <coughs> Osage 300. Um, so that's all you. Oh, and this is a way to link through to. <coughs> the workflow console using email smart links. So if you want to link back, <coughs> excuse me, into the into the console, as a, if you are in the office, you can include that as well. And then the form is very similar. This one's not HTML, but it could have been, and it can include those same variables that you have, but obviously it wouldn't include form URL because this is the um, form itself. And you would, and that's um, all you need to do. So import the module, configure your workflow templates to use those actions, but of course, before then, come to your um, remote action and enter your token, and away you go. But the last thing I did was actually set up my process scheduler, and this is just an icon to, to my process scheduler schedule, which is this particular schedule here. Uh, remote access, which just runs a extender script, and the extender script that it runs is the remote action polar. So for more info on how to set up process scheduler, see the training video on our website. But process scheduler level one can run an extender script, and in this case, it's running the polar action, and it knows how to go out to that um, to your name token, your namespace, or your via your token in this particular company, and uh, then bring down any of the actions that you have. And the advantage of running it through um, Process Scheduler in the audit log. So this is uh, the time I ran this morning, and it associated with each time I run. Although it was successful, I still get a log file. So in here, I can see two workflow IDs were progressed and they were both successful. If there had been something unsuccessful, for example, if both Steve and Natalie went to approve, the first one in would come in as a success, but the second one would be, you know, the workflow is not in the state it thought it was in, so you would just get, uh, you know, nothing would be progressed in that workflow. And if I look at the history, I can see all the times that I ran, whether I got errors or not, and you can shed, you can set up your process scheduler schedule to only send an email if there was an error. So every time it runs and it's successful, don't worry about it. But if there was an error, then send me an email. So at that stage, I would know I need to go and look at the log and see what didn't happen. And in this case, it was a timing issue um, with the the uh, you know the user the step for Natalie tried to approve. Uh, tried to apply her approval, but the workflow was not in the right state for her to do that. So she, that step was essentially um, ignored. And I think that's um, what I needed to, to address. So I just see a couple of questions. Um, okay. Um, for remote actions with batch approvals, can the web form be configured to display the details of the entry within the batch? Uh, that's a really good question, uh, Dean. Thank you. No, it can't at this stage, but what we're working on now is at the same time of sending, and this is not just for remote actions, it's for all uh, it's for all workflows, is we're working on an action to send a report with the email. So what you would have on in your email would be the attached PDF of the batch, in this case, the AP invoice batch, that you would review first. And if you were happy, then you go to the form um, and click. Uh, so, and then obviously that uh, PDF would be available as well, if you even if you weren't using remote action. I think just to, to add to that particular question, Using Extender Developer, you could probably build your own form and your own custom action that would actually have a special variable that would, you know, get the details that you want to see. But that wouldn't be part of Configurator, and that's currently not uh, not released. So you would need a an additional uh, script to um, to get that going. Um, then there's a question. Is there a sample company for this uh, on the ORCID website? 
So we do have an ORCID extender workflow uh, sample company on the website at the moment, which doesn't include remote action though. It re includes those original six um, uh, uh, workflow, t uh, workflow templates that I demonstrated in the video, but we will be putting up uh, reloading extender um, and a new, a new uh, extender workflow company, which has a remote action configured as well. But importing the module, you get the samples as well, you get the actions and a sample message templates too. Okay, should we just uh, finish off that the presentation? Yep. I see we got three minutes left and then we'll complete the, the questions. And okay, so we've seen our two uh, scenarios with AR customer and AP, uh, AP invoice. And we've also looked at how it works within Sage 300 and, and within, uh, within Extender. So in summary, you need to run the latest product update of Extender for the supported versions. That's version 2018 to 2020 at the moment. And import the remote action.vi modules. They will both be available on the product downloads page of our website um, by, uh, by this coming Monday. We then looked at how you uh, import the token and view your remote action uh, options and then incorporate those actions in a workflow template. So your workflow template can be uh, as simple or as complicated as you need it to be. It can be based on the examples that are currently in our uh, ORCID workflow sample data for version 2020. And you include one or multiple of these actions either with a comment and an amount or comment only or no uh, comment at all. You customize the content of the form at the email notification in the extender message template area. And the buttons that you see on the form are also configurable. The label is whatever you want it to be and the action that it does, the step that it goes to when you click the button is configured in the workflow. And then we looked at the um, script that you run to pull to pull a request back from the website uh, running the script and or um, and or process uh, process scheduler so if you're uh, can't wait to get started with remote action uh, in the uh, Oops, sorry, went too quickly on this one. The details of the service will be available or are available through your usual ORCID distributor. So um, Robert Lavery um, will have has all the details about the pricing. So to get started, you need extender, either configurator or developer. You need process scheduler level one or above to automate the polar. And then you need workflow users. Now, you're probably aware that currently to run the um, workflow console, you need ORCID users. They're being replaced by workflow users, which are named users for all users that need to access the workflow console or the remote action service. There is a new pricing. It is cheaper than the current concurrent DML users, but we can't go into the details of the pricing as they all are set by the various currencies by the different uh, regions. The service, uh, the subscription to the remote action service uh, it is a subscription only and the pricing structure is based on how many actions or requests are required per month on three basic tiers. So with NFR partner, it'll be free and you have access to 500 requests per month. And a request is really every time a form is created. So every time you use one of these actions that creates the form. The bronze will be up to uh, 2,000 requests per month, silver up to 5,000, gold up to 10,000. And if you need more than that, contact us for, um, for a, a quote. Uh, the requests that aren't used in a particular month, um, that's, um, that's a good question. I mean, nothing happens to them. They don't roll over to, uh, to the next month. The, the tiers can be uh, adjusted, you know, it will help you work out how many uh, requests you think you need for your client uh, to uh, to get started. So if they start with uh, silver and find that they only ever have uh, less than 10, uh, 2000 requests, then uh, we can move um, move to the bronze, uh, to the bronze level, um, et cetera. So, um, Thing that's what you need to um, module-wise to um, to get started. Um, so summary of um, 
you know, the benefits is that you can approve your uh, Sage 300 records without logging into Sage 300. It is um, easy to use, can be used on any um, internet connected device. So on your um, mobile, on your smartphone, on your on your laptop, on a, on a Mac, on a, a VM Fusion. You don't need to install a configure IIS or open any firewall ports. You don't need to have a fixed IP address. It is all pull requests coming from um, extender and the remote action uh, module going to, to the service. The service itself is uh, secure, built on the Django framework and hosted on uh, Amazon Web Services. And it builds on extender's ability to run Python scripts and packages. It is configurable. I think you've seen both in the video how you can configure the workflow with various uh, levels of approval. The person who starts can't approve different approvers for different levels, etc. And then the form and the email are also configurable as, uh, as we've seen. Now the workflow applies to say 300 core modules and SDK third party modules and it applies to master files like AP customer AP vendors they are customers transactions such as OE uh, orders purchase orders purchase requisitions uh, RMA headers and uh, batches like AP invoice batches AP payments AR refunds GL transactions um et, uh, et cetera. So for, uh, for details, uh, you can go to our website, go to product, uh, the remote action product page on our website that includes detail of how it works. You will be sent a recording of this uh, webinar. And uh, obviously, uh, Rob Lavery is, uh, is available to answer any questions, and so are we. This uh, service was built in uh, collaboration or was built primarily by Poplar Development headed by Chris Binkley, who many of you have been working with in the last few months on various extender uh, projects. And um, if any of you want more technical details on how this um, service has been architected and, and configured, uh, you can join uh, Rob Lavery and Chris Binkley uh, tomorrow for a deep dive into the architecture of remote action. They have a uh, technical uh, webinar tomorrow um, uh, scheduled for, uh, for tomorrow. So uh, it's open for questions. I know we have addressed a couple already. Um, let's go back. If document management link is used and documents are stored in the cloud, would it be possible to provide links to the relevant documents on the web form? Um, most likely the answer to that is yes. Whether um, it could just be a link that you use with configurator or whether you would need a custom action, uh, we might uh, come back to that. We'll uh, answer that uh, separately. We might need to have a little think about it before confirming. Uh, thanks, uh, Jaime, for your uh, for your feedback. And um, anyway, if you have any other questions, uh, Rob has all the details, and you can also email us on support at orchid.systems. And uh, yeah, all the, what you need to get started will be uh, available by Monday. And if you want your NFR token, email uh, support at orchid.systems, and uh, Sue will send you a token. Thanks for your time. Apologies for running out of um, running overtime by a few minutes. Hopefully, it was it was worth it.